So I'll complete this uh, discussion of uh, statistical testing uh, with some important issues about the interpretation of the test and uh, particularly the size and power properties of the, of the test. So I mentioned it already, but I'll, I'll come back to this point that, uh, that um, in uh, empirical research, particularly when we test significance of, of uh, regression coefficients, researchers are usually actually uh, trying to reject the null hypothesis that there's no impact. So this is actually in, in statistical testing usually the, uh, the standard approach that, uh, that we want to make this kind of skeptical hypothesis that there's no impact, there's no correlation, there's no, no, no nothing. And actually we want to just show that, uh, that uh, by rejecting the hypothesis, uh, uh, we, we will then say that we can say that there is significant impact, that it's not just, uh, just uh, coincidental or it's very unlikely that this kind of um, impacts that we estimate are just uh, accidental. So uh, this also then relates to this, how do we, how do we uh, interpret this result that the null hypothesis accepted or, or rejected? In some sense, the reject is quite clear, but, um, but uh, it might be sometimes a little bit misleading to, to, to use this term that the null hypothesis accepted. In some sense, uh, it may be better to say that uh, there is just not enough reject, uh, not enough evidence that we could reject the null. So in that sense, it continues to be true, but uh, but uh, we we don't know if it's really really true or not. And uh, and in this perspective, it's good to then make this distinction between uh, the the statistical power of the test and the statistical size of the test. Okay. So in some sense, the Accepting null hypothesis, we think about it that okay, we fail to reject the null, even though though it, in some sense the empirical researcher typically wants to reject the null hypothesis when we when we talk about the significance tests. So, it can be helpful to think about this kind of uh, uh, two types of uh, types of error uh, labeled as type one error and type two error. So, um, type one error can occur if we reject the null hypothesis when it is actually true. And type two error refers to the situation when uh, uh, we accept the null hypothesis when it is actually false. And then of course, uh, it's possible to make, uh, make the correct, uh, uh, co correct conclusion as well. So um, uh, it's helpful to think about it uh, in analog with the, with, the, with the, let's say courts of justice or Suppose that there is some some uh, uh, suspects of a crime, and then then the court needs to needs to rule that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, is this person is the suspect uh, guilty or not. So there are two types of error in that case. Also, either either we put an innocent person to prison, or or we let the let the criminal who is guilty walk free. So in that sense, these two type one and type two errors are are similar, and and then of course, uh, like in the case of the criminal justice, then what is the how much harm is done if we if we let a guilty person walk free rather than put an innocent person to a prison? So so also also in statistical testing, uh, we actually don't want to put uh, put uh, innocent people to the to the to the prison very lightly. So that's why then then. Uh, also, this kind of probability of type one error and type two error can be somewhat different. I come back to this point shortly in more detail, but let's take this kind of concept of what is called size of a test. So, in fact, this uh, this uh, it refers to the probability of type one error, and uh, here is an important point that we actually can control for the size of the test directly by setting this uh, significance level alpha. So when we take, for example, 5% significance level in our statistical test, it means that, that, that we can accept this kind of uh, a risk of 5% uh, that we reject null hypothesis when it is in fact true. So notice that, uh, that uh, uh, when we decide to reject the null hypothesis, uh, uh, then uh, we are 
in effect we are on this uh, operating on this rightmost column so rejecting the null hypothesis there are two possibilities either the null hypothesis is true and we commit type 1 error or the null hypothesis is false and we have made a correct conclusion okay so remember that uh, that uh, how this uh, significance alpha is used in the statistical inferences so so the uh, this statistic is constructed so that uh, assuming that the null hypothesis is true and when this uh, when this probability that our test statistic uh, is in the acceptance regions is smaller than the significance level level alpha then we reject the null hypothesis so uh, in that sense then then uh, uh, we have controlled for the size of the test so the size of the test is uh, is is equal to the to the significance level alpha and this is particularly why in the significance uh, testing uh, when we reject the null hypothesis we can be quite confident that indeed that there is not uh, not some kind of uh, just uh, just some uh, some uh, accidental correlation or some kind of accidental effect of the explanatory variable because because uh, or, or, or this kind of uh, uh, making this kind of type type one error is is uh, very unlikely. But then there's this other other type of error called type two error, and uh, one minus the probability of type two error is called the power of the test. So, like the name suggests, we of course want to have a as as powerful test as possible. So, if there are alternative ways of testing. Uh, which might lead to a different result, then, then we would, of course, prefer to have the most powerful test for the given level of significance. So, like in the case of the, these uh, courts of justice, of course, if we, if we set this uh, uh, size of the test uh, very, very low, so if, or, or if, uh, if we have this uh, significance level very, very low, then the probability uh, or, or it will influence the power of the test. So, so um, if, if it compared to the courts of justice, so how big evidence we want to have in order to convict a person to prison, then then uh, uh, if you want to minimize the possibility that uh, that the innocent people will be put to the prison, as a result, we end up also uh, that uh, that some guilty people will also be be using the benefit of the doubt and walking free and the same situation occurs here also that uh, if you if you restrict this uh, uh, significance alpha to very very small then the probability that uh, that uh, we also end up uh, uh, accepting the null hypothesis when it is actually false increases so this is also why why then then uh, in contrast to the situation where we reject the null hypothesis, when we accept the null hypothesis or maintain the null hypothesis, then the probability that we have made a correct decision actually depends on this type 2 error. And in contrast to alpha, this uh, power of the test uh, we do not directly observe. So, so typically in empirical applications, we don't really know uh, what is the what is the probability that we have made a correct decision if we maintain the null hypothesis because the type 2 error or this probability is not directly controlled for so this is why I have indicated the question mark in the in the title of the slide that uh, that um, uh, when we end up uh, maintaining the null hypothesis uh, we typically don't know that, that how likely it is that we have made a, made a correct uh, decision. So, so this is the reason why typically in empirical research, when we do significance tests, we actually want to reject the null hypothesis because then we know already that what is the probability of type one error because we control it by the significance alpha. But uh, when we end up maintaining the null hypothesis, then, then who knows what's the probability of type two error. Um, it is of course possible to 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 try to try to get it, but uh, but of course uh, the null hypothesis can be false in so many different ways. So so that's uh, that's uh, typically then some kind of computer simulations or so-called Monte Carlo simulations that uh, that can uh, 
can be used for assessing this, uh, this probability of type 2 error. Uh, in general, this type 1 error is, is, uh, is more easier to control, but for type 2 error, it's much more difficult to, to know what is, the, what is the probability of type 2 error. So again, 1 minus probability of type 2 error was called the power of the test. So I hope that helps to also clarify why in empirical practice we typically want to reject the null hypothesis of no impact. And in some sense, uh, it's a failure of the, of the empirical setting that if, if we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And uh, uh, sometimes, of course, um, some um, opportunistic uh, researchers may be using this kind of uh, failure to reject uh, as an argument uh, to support the null hypothesis. So, of course, it's uh, uh, not very difficult to design such kind of uh, research set setting where, where it's very difficult to reject the null hypothesis. You just need to have relatively small sample size, uh, small number of degrees of freedom, and, uh, and uh, then, then uh, you fail to reject the, the null hypothesis. So, so, uh, so uh, in that sense, you should be also uh, cautious when somebody is, is uh, using this kind of uh, acceptance of the null hypothesis of a significance test as somehow evidence in, in favor of, the, of some kind of, let's say, policy recommendation or, or some kind of managerial recommendation. So in that case, it's, it's good to be aware of, okay, that, that uh, type 2 error we typically don't know and, uh, and, uh, and it's very uh, difficult to also estimate. So that completes my, my discussion of the, of the statistical inferences. We will also do statistical inferences later in many other contexts also. But uh, in the, and the next general theme, I will, I will expand the regression model with the so-called uh, dummy variables. Thanks for your attention and see you in the next lesson.